Let me say the clearest thing here. So, good afternoon. We are starting the session AC4 for automatic control. And the, per, the first uh, presentation is called Real Time Tracking Control Using Adaptive Dynamic Programming for Underwater Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Claudia Rejel. And I'm here today to present you the work behind this paper research. As we can see in the title, we are going to talk about some of the implications of using adaptive dynamic programming, this fairly recent approach. Also, we're going to talk about using them in uh, complex systems as in the underwater vehicles. And, and we also can talk about a new like perspective for consider the model of the system. So, um, in a way, if we will drive through this presentation. We will start first with some of the motivation for from the work, and we will give the proper context. Like we were talking about the systems, we are going to talk about the approach, and we are going to talk about this new perspective of our modeling. Next, um, we will see the steps that we were taking through our um, well, through the course of our investigation and also the real time implementation. Then we will see some of the results for our vehicle. And then in the final section, we are going to talk about what we are going to mention some conclusions and some future work. Then, with the introduction. First things first, um, it is pretty common that in control theory, it's always interesting to um, propose new and practical controllers for complex systems, especially if the complexity is taken into account into the design, uh, design process of the controller. Well, we have the <laughs> systems with highly non-linear dynamics. And these kind of systems, maybe which will present some challenges if we afford that. Um, for example, we will have an um, analytical acquired model. But always with these analytical acquired models, 
there coexist, or you can give up some of uh, the accuracy of the phenomenal involved in the systems, of, or, or in another case, we, we will have a control law for this kind of systems, but we are in the need to neglect some of the non-linearities um, for the sake of the efficiency controller. For this, well, we're going to imagine for a second that we have to work with one of these systems as is the underwater vehicle. If you are in this space, you several um, several such important questions. The first one, if you want to do a um, controller tasking uh, task, I uh, know, sorry, a controller uh, tasking control program with these kind of vehicles, well, you have to think about the controller. Uh, for the controller, you have to ask yourself, what are the main characteristics and most important, want the characteristics to achieve the aim that you want? Um, at least for our research, where these two keywords that we want to achieve optimality and adaptability. So uh, the following is thinking about the modeling. As I mentioned before, um, we in this paper uh, work with a new perspective of modeling. Why? And as we know, um, most of the controllers are, are model-based controllers. But uh, as I mentioned also before, uh, using these kind of models will lead us to lacking of important accuracy for system characteristics. And also we could have this a situation when when we couldn't find some system parameters because of the lack of uh, proper testing installations. Then um, for this work, we propose to use an identification process modeling. <laughs> Input and output data. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about now about the approach. Why we select this kind of approach? Well, uh, as you can read in the slide, uh, the adaptive dynamic programming approach will give us the beneficial characteristics from both uh, optimal and adaptive control approaches, but combinated. Uh, we, well, some of you will know that um, if you are using this kind of approaches separately. You can face some limitations as, I don't know, uh, again with the analytical uh, acquired model, you have to know in some scenarios, you have to know all the exact analytical model to start with some of the, of the controllers in these kind of approaches. Or you can have the limitants of uh, only working in discrete time rather than in continuous time also because of the uh, nature of these approaches. Then, well, with the adaptive dynamic programming, kind of we have the best of both worlds, and well considered to support our artificial neural networks. The artificial neural networks were a very, very important part in this kind of work. Why? Somewhere on the road, we will have to um, need some complex calculations that only the artificial neural networks will go, well, they will serve us as a valuable tool due to their approximation capabilities. That being said, uh, I'm going to explain uh, how is the identification process done. This is the algorithm I present you. Uh, you start with having not and like an unknown system, but an unknown structure model system. At least, yeah. Then a um, uh, dynamical neural, neural network identifier is proposed, as it's, uh, as you can see too. And uh, so <laughs> you have the state in here. You have uh, some uh, uh, activation function because this is a neural um, approach, and you have. These parameters here that are the important parameters work, we will call them the identified parameters. And why they're important? Because 
these are the parameters that we have to know after our uh, identification process is done. So how we will get there? Well, uh, you have to develop an stability proof for the identifier the policy two, where the lapping assumption is described by these terms, the errors, basically the identification error, mm -hmm. the errors of the parameters, and you will come up with something called the update loss. Or if you can see the learning loss, uh, it's a more common term in the neural community, as I could say. And well, these parameters or this update loss uh, describe the behavior until they will converge into a fixed numerical values. And these fixed numerical values will be used to compose the ultimate form of our model, in fact. Um, next one. Uh, I present you an schematic way to see uh, the control part in the integration in this kind of approach. First, um, as I mentioned before, we have our system, it's our vehicle in our case, and this is a charging control problem. So, uh, as, as we can see, we obtain the charging error, and we have next two important parts that calls the critical part and the actual part. And why? Because this is an approach of adaptive dynamic uh, programming. A control with an architect, archi, architect, architecture, architectures, sorry, um, with an architecture of actor critic a controller. So these all two parts uh, are in charge of two different important situations here in the um, tracking uh, problem. We first we have to thing to stabilize the stationary part of the state. But also we have to think in um, um, the convergence of the state into our reference at the same time. That's why it exists two parts. The first part, the critical part, is in charge of the first one that I mentioned, and the actual part is in charge of the other one. And as you can see, this to uh, discoverize with the approximation of well, 28 of their artificial neural networks. All this kind of stuff united at the end of our, of our, of our process to compose the final of the, oh, sorry, the final control of. These are the equations involved in the control part. And as I say in seven, the final control log is composed by two parts, and the actor and the critic is um, uh, the approximation of this element and the critic for this element. And as any other <laughs> optimal problem, we have our value function based on the tracking error and or Hamiltonian function. Then, uh, as it follows, there is um, the well, because there is involved neural networks. Also, like in the other case, we have to find our update loss in, for this. The update loss are for the weight critics parameter. And for and for the uh, weight actors parameter that are in thirteen and fifteen. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about this section here. Um, a step by plan summarizes the process uh, that has been conducted during this research. Uh, the first one is collect input and output data from the previous test conducted with the actual output. Then we're going to process the identification algorithm. This is an outline process uh, to derive the parameters for the identified model. Then that identified model will be used in the next stage the, that it will be integrate this model into the controller. Then 
program de control work for perform a charging task for the vehicle. And last one, uh, execute the implementation phase uh, with real time experiments. So, guys, I present you the vehicle that we will use, well, that we use. Uh, this is um, Blue Rod 2 from the company Blue Robotics with four degrees of freedom represented there. And if you can see in this first photo, this is during the experimental test. No. Then we have an um, experimental set on skin. And you can see uh, we had our run station that it was a simple data with this package, press package installed that allows us to control the vehicle and our, um, some of the um, actions like arming and disarming the vehicle um, and sending uh, values to the, to the trusters, something like that. And it's connected that it's this way. And the joystick for manual handling. Well, with the research, um, the main contribution for this paper were the implementation, the real implementation for these approaches, these complex approaches in the real vehicle. And actually, was precisely the uh, stage that is more challenging. Because uh, first, ah, sorry, okay, um, it was the most challenge uh, stage. Uh, I have the video that improves the real time. This is for uh, we will conduct two experiments: one for Joe and one for Dips Dynamics. <laughs> it's for Joe. This were and. Um, these were made in uh, Olympic pool here in Mexico City mm -hmm. that calls, I think, Francisco Marquez in the south of the city. And this is the, well, this is the depth dynamic. Well, we have Joe. Can, can you please put Joe? This is for Joe. And finally, thank you. Now, I only want to show you the results in images for the identification in Joe, for the charting control in Joe, or it was the same reference that it was shown in the video, and the identification for depth, and the, 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 the charting control for depth. And these are the conclusions. Only, well, and the first one is that we could do this new perspective of modeling. Second one is that the actor predict architecture could be uh, demonstrate the, its effectiveness to conduct in real time tracking. And well, the purchase of the weight matrix of behavior and the future for being to achieve fully, fully autonomous performance for the vehicle and to explore variations in equation functions and weight matrices. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. I have a very question. First, what are the, are the advantages of your approach comparing with traditional methods like PID control or PID TV control? Okay. Um, for me, it seems too complicated. <laughs> a little bit. Um, well, it has the advantage of these kind of methods that uh, you were mentioned before are uh, used like with pixel um, pixel. Games and if you want to perform another test, you have to uh, pass through all these stages or or I'm, I'm missing the word in English. Turning, like turning, yes, turning. It's the so, so you have to perform automatic tuning. Yeah. So there is the adaptation. Yeah, there is adaptation, and also there's okay. like this optimal part is in charge not only to get the parameter but also get the yes, quite adaptive control, quite adaptive the parameters. Quite adaptive the parameters. Yes, 
So you are tuning continuously your control your parameters. Why? Uh, for instance, uh, there, there is a lot of work using for underwater vehicles using PID with fixed gain, yeah. and it performs very well. What is the advantage of your approach? Uh, I, 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 I see a lot of problems with your approach. First, there is no physical interpretation of the parameter you are identifying. Uh -huh. For the second, uh, I ignore what are the conditions for performing the parameter identification in the first part of your, uh -huh. uh, your exposition. I don't know. Ah, the conditions are only to conduct a test with no, no, the vehicle no. being. What, what, kind of, no, no. what kind of trajectory is most followed your uh, underwater vehicle in order to perform a correct identification of the parameters? For well, example, if you need to, no, because you need, in, in this case, to, mm -hmm. to fulfill uh, an excitation condition yes. in order to obtain a good parameter mm -hmm. convergence. Mm -hmm. And you didn't mention this condition. Ah, okay, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> in classic, in classic uh, parameter identification, for example, using least square algorithms, you need to, to, to fulfill a uh, persistence of uh, excitation mm -hmm. condition. In this case, what's the condition you need to fulfill? Uh, it's also, well, first to the identification, and we tried with several um, trajectories, mm -hmm. and even if you change the trajectory, you can do another trajectory for the control part. Uh, and for the experience. Yes, but, yes, but for me, something like this missing is the fact that you, you don't show a metric, for example, the, the interval with the square error, showing that your, uh, your okay. model fits, your model data fits correctly, or at least in the less square sense, in the, the, the experimental results. That, that's correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's correct, actually. And it was more like in, in this time of lab timing for the, the development of all these stages, because okay. it, it was not only implementation, but simulation, but trying other different trajectories and having this kind of errors, typical errors that the data will be not processed in the way that is useful and, well, uh, due to type uh, time lacking, we couldn't do all these kind of useful, as, as I mentioned, useful comparisons, useful um, parameters. I don't know what to but yeah, it's it's. it's Any questions? No. Thank you very much for your presentation. And this talk is called uh, Robust Trajectory Tracking Control or Problem. Solution for a PV toll system on the first way. What about your presentation? No, I didn't move for the factories. Oh. It's Spanish, no, it's in English. Mm -hmm. Your presentation should be in English. Okay, yeah. no problem. Okay. Let's start. Okay, I'm going to talk about the robust trajectory for a pivotal. Uh, Next. Okay, the table of contents are brief introduction, the one and second, the control strategy, the numerical simulation, the conclusion. Uh, first, for the brief introduction, I uh, showed you the, the figure of the pivotal, uh, the op option B. Uh, 220, and the idea of a pivotal is uh, to take off uh, vertically. Uh, the pain that works, uh, well, um, some of the sastry is some of zero meters, and the pivotal is um, addressed uh, mostly like a simplified model of a quadcopter. 
the quad capsular is in six dimensional coordinates. This is in three dimensional co coordinates. Uh, one for uh, one for the vertical, one for the horizontal, and one for for the angle. In fact, these are the questions that I told you. Uh, they are really simplified in a section of these uh, these terms. These terms are about uh, the coupling with the air. Uh, in this case, uh, we have the the motion that I told you, x, y, and the angle, and two forces. Uh, because two forces, because we have uh, two actuators. Huh? Uh, the next. Uh, this is a drawing of this or the previous equations. Uh, this seems like we are addressing laminar flow, but it's not in this case uh, because in the uh, in the real scenarios we consider a turbulent uh, airflow. Okay, the next is the following is the following change of variables uh, and the following equations uh, became this. And these equations are only a normalized version of the previous ones. The following are the considerations. So what, what considerations? Uh, the, we have all the systems measurable and the cross wave forces are uh, bounded. Uh, this is a kind of acceleration, but we can make this consideration if the motors are, are able to deal with the with the with the maximum uh, um, levels of, of wind. The next is uh, a separation. Uh, probably we have a model where we have mixed the control channel with the state channel. And well, uh, this is a, a common uh, separation uh, with a part of the uh, exclusive dependent of the state and a part is dependent of the forces. The control is split into uh, one of uh, one of the, this part is intended for the trajectory and and the other part is intended for the uh, disturbances. In the, in this case, the the nominal part or the trajectory part is solved uh, by uh, as in the classic model of the uh, wheeled robots. Okay, in the wheeled robots, you have a a, a, a projection. And you uh, simply simply uh, feedback these uh, these these projections, and you have a a semi flat model, kind of flat. In this case, well, once you have the flatness, you establish uh, your your desired polynomial or your Horvitz polynomial. The other part is interesting because uh, here we're addressing with the uncertainties. These uncertainties are not necessarily managed. In this case, uh, the uncertainty control is addressed uh, with a kind of a sliding mode. Oh, you can see the sliding mode. The, the magnitude uh, divided uh, um, divided uh, into the um, the I don't know. You're no. cooling them. Yes, no. You're cooling them. No, it's not the cooling them. No. The, the no. The other is the demonstration of the stability of the stability. Now, uh, supposing this um, this bounded of the wind, you can demonstrate that this is uh, rigid in a, in a kind of finite time. Here we are going to show you the experimental proofs. The first experimental proof is um, is tracking this trajectory. And we use this this uh, crosswind effect. Uh, in this case, this crosswind effect is um, it could be uh, related to a uh, turbulent flow. Well, it is very tiny, but we are uh, demonstrating that we are following the trajectories. Uh, this is the problem of our control. Uh, it reaches in uh, finite time, but the problem here is that we introduce a uh, chattering. The the main problem of the sliding mode. The second experiment, we we are following this reference, and the same we obtain the the reference we 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 reach this reference. The third experiment is uh, almost uh, the same. You could say the you you could see oh, sorry the. 
the chartering is it's unavoidable in this kind of uh, control. Maybe if you uh, use uh, uh, an hyperbolic tangent or something like that, but you lose this part of the finite time. Yeah, by components. Yes. In conclusion, we propose uh, a robust feedback trajectory tracking, uh, tracking control for a simple digital system. As I told you, the the version that is associated as a simplified version of a quad, quad rotor. Uh, to this end, we complete feedback linearization and the slided mode control, the slided mode for the perturbation and the other for the trajectory tracking. Uh, our, well, this is the same that I told you. The continuous control the controller so it's the trajectory problem. The second is for the unmatched perturbations. Uh, and because the perturbation level are bounded, we can ensure that the second controller can start the disturbance. Uh, all, all, also by supposing that the bounded exists. That in the real system, it is acceptable, uh, uh, but not if you are dealing with the uh, hurricanes or something like, like that, but, oh, sorry. Uh, in this case, you are supposing that the motors are able to deal with these perturbations. Uh, okay, we propose the uh, scenarios that, that, we, that I told you. Uh, three scenarios: one, one with a perturbation, one with a, with with um, to, uh, with um, I I forget it, a turbulent scenario, and the other with a scenario with a, um, a kind of of vortex in the propeller. In future scenarios, we are uh, dealing with adding an adaptable controller to uh, to estimate the perturbation bounds. Uh, well, this is our process. Uh, that's all for this presentation. Who so wants to ask? My question is clear, I think. Okay. I have a lot of questions. Why is language more control? Jacqueline, you, you, you will kill the the person in the PD4 using this approach. Okay. Uh, because the, the vibration. Yes, I can. In many cases, you're using electric motor for mm -hmm. experimental PD4. In practice, you have uh, combustion engines. So I don't think they can withstand uh, a signal function. Suppose that the. Uh, it, it, this one part, second part, why? I like how? Okay. Well, the, the, the first question uh, is answered in this way. Uh, suppose that you are a hurricane hunter. A yeah, hurricane hunter, uh, not all the flight is uh, smooth. In certain parts of the flight, it is uh, very violent, the, the flight. And in this uh, violent part, uh, the control could be used only for a uh, uh, to the person of the disturbance you know, of the hurricane. Just for it. If you survive a hurricane. Uh, yes, it is time to control. Uh, yeah, because it's very costly, so <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, friend. For today, it's possible. Projection control with integral sliding mode uh, for a quad rotor. I remember it. Okay. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Camila Sanchez, and today I'm going to present my research model that we call TV based disturbance protection control via aerial, via interval and dynamo. For a quad rotor aerial view. Its co authors are Dr. Jorge Cervantes and Dr. Stitch. Okay. 
for important of the position is physics and my connections inter out studying of people, inner car results, and contribution. You still know that the UAVs sometimes um, their their performance are affected by disturbances. These disturbances can affect recovery and trajectory tracking. So, some examples of these serial disturbances can be in model dynamics, vehicles, and servos. So. To mitigate these effects, yeah. control techniques are essential. Here we can use a class control or more control. So um, the disadvantages of classic control are the lack of practice. It's louder. Ah, okay. So please. Yes, yeah, So uh, lack of productivity, the inability to handle the on model dynamics and the conservativeness in tone. Some advantages of the modern control are the adaptab adaptability, the state of space for presentation, and the Sunrose is techniques. In modern control, there is a control technique called integral design mode control that offers robustness. So, well, the control objective. We the control objective is that a controller, uh, what well, is a trajectory tracking of some predefined, um, some predefined, um, some predefined trajectories. But here the controller is going to have external disturbances. In this case, the this disturbance is going to be the wind costs. Okay. Here is presented the closed loop diagram. In this case, I'm only going to explain for the altitude dynamic. So to have that the altitude dynamic is affected by the external perturbation. But here in the control techniques, as you can control technique, as you can see, we have a phenomenal control part and a discontinuous control. Here are the controller's mathematical model, translational dynamic, and operational dynamic. And for the lumpet disturbances, there are the lumpet disturbances for translational dynamics and for operational. And we are considering the following assumption. In assumption number one, we have some boundary conditions. And in assumption number two, we have a natural condition. Then, okay, I'm going, I'm going to explain first the integral design of control. As you can see, we have an integral design of variable that is conformed by a standard design of variable and a uh, figure. Well, here we have 18 and 19, that is the alpha dynamic and the charting error dynamics in 20. Then we have the control input in letter C, which is defined as 21. And in 22, we can see the user C is continuous action. Then we have here in 24 and 25 the closed loop system, and we define the integral equilibrium variable that, as I mentioned before, we have a standard sliding variable and and integral auxiliary variable. We have in 27 the time derivative of S and the time derivative of R is selected to compensate the known elements as is shown in 28. And finally in 29 we have the, the equation number 28 in the here in therapy we apply a stability 
en dan zie ik waar je dat kan zijn. Weer op de middel. En 1331, we hebben een equivalent control. In final 32, we hebben een andere instruction als een lampet externe. But here we have the equivalent control, but first to obtain it, we have to pass the usage key through a loop as filter. Now, once that we have usage key one, we pass it through a loop as filter, and we are going to tap our equivalent control. So now in 33, 33, you can see that we have the result of our sliding motion. And in 34, we have the U sub C equivalent with the Lucas filter being a problem. But here the problem is that the time constant of the Lucas filter is not adapted. So if our um, error tracking magnitude change, we can have um, a, correct, a correct approximation of the disturbances. And also, that must be large enough to eliminate the high frequencies, but short enough to preserve the single standard. Now that we have in BCC one, is we need to um, uh, we need to um, to change the the time derivative of f and r. Mm -hmm. So we have thirty five and thirty six, and this is because the this is structure of thirty six and thirty five and thirty six prevents the chattering of the model of the model dynamics and. It avoids an excitation of on the direct control pattern. Well, then the technical inputs that were designed by the ISMC are 37, 38, 39, and 4. Finally, there is a fusion internet system, there is an Andani fusion internet system. For the time adaptation of time constant adaptation of the filter. And okay, this the this PC invariant system was based on the not on the knowledge of the framework obtained by turning the ISMC with several values and in different numerical scenarios. Here we have that if T if tau decreases, also increase, increases the influence of high frequencies, but these reduce the tracking error magnitude. On the other hand, if we have that that increases, we have the opposite effect, and the tracking error magnitude then begins from zero. It's important to remark that there is a trade-off between tau and the error magnitude and the magnitude of the error magnitude. Here we have the membership contract structure of the Mandani inference system. You have that we really don't have one output and one input. For the input, we have the tracking error magnitude, and for the output, we're going to have the cutoff frequencies. The, um, here we're going to have for the Variables, five Gaussians membership functions, and here two singleton members membership functions. Here are the predefined predefined uh, trajectories. Here the blue ones are the position for five, and the orange ones are the velocity of price. Here in theory number three, we're going to have the trajectory tracking of the translational states. And in figure number four, we have the rotational. 
Yeah. Finally, here in cure number five, we have the equivalent control versus the lump external pain. The blue ones are the equivalent control, and the orange ones are the lump disturbances. As you can see, the equivalent control estimates the lump disturbances. And okay, well, the main contributions of these research you know, are that there is this work offer an adaptive an adaptive online method for turning the time constant of the local center. Uh, also there is, today there is no no there is not a research here that combine the internal design mode control, the QI control method, the Lucas filter, and the Pandani increasing inference And also, it, there is no uh, there is no research field for this kind of control into a UAV. Um, if I have my okay. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Okay. One, one, one question. Is it okay for me how to do use the, the integral in light mode? Integral light mode? Where do you do? Because I, I see traditional integral like no no integral. Uh, your question is about why I use the interval. Uh -huh. uh, well, first of all, uh, with interval is a new move, we avoid shattering. Because since the first movement we start in the variable surface, so we don't have that time to to have shuffling and also with this with this control technique we avoid the the perturbation. Okay. Okay. One question. Oh, thank you for your presentation. Thank you very much for your assistance.